Pagu by Holing Clancy Holing Chapter 13 The Grotto of Eating Trees Pagu felt that he must go after the snail shell. He had seen it pop from the center of the sea anemone and had watched it roll from that gay flower to the tide pole floor beneath. He raced down the rock to search for it. He came to the place where the other hermit had slipped and fallen. Weeds slid out from under him and broke loose. He couldn't hang on. He, too, was slipping. Directly below him stood the same anemone which had swallowed a little snail before his very eyes, but it was still tightly closed and did not spread its tentacles to snare him. He bounced on its rubbery bulges and dropped to the floor. All about him crowded an ancient, fantastic jungle. Anemones reared above Pegu like stout palm trees of blazing color. In the watery sunlight, their fronds seemed to be jeweled and gilded. Pegu walked on the sandy floor in swirls of liquid gold and shadow. With these rainbow colors arching above, the witchery of the place might have enchanted a more sensitive soul. Pe Pegu was made of sterner stuff. He was not struck with the staggering beauty around him. He just staggered that way to keep under cover. He must find that new empty snail shell. Sneaking along with his tail, part tucked under Pagu, blundered into a fairy cave. The rock walls of this dusty grotto were hidden beneath a crowded forest of growth. The roof was hung with ferns and bushes growing upside down. Pale, lacy nests of growth mm -hmm. spread out near blooming mosses. This mysterious grotto seemed fairly alive with shadows, and the place was alive in more ways than one. Things were not what they might seem to be. The blooming moss, the lacy nests, the hanging ferns and bushes were really colonies of very small animals. Most of these bryozoan colonies looked like plants, each animal budding out from its neighbor but each traps its own sea soup food using rings of slender tentacles. Just as trees tower above, underneath other animals here, stretched above the bryozonas, these hydroid colonies are also built by hundreds of tiny creatures growing in early rows. Some hydroids grow like slender palms with waving plumes, each animal traps food for the colony with stinging tentacles. Pagu once had traveled with children of hydroid families. Tiny Medusa jellyfish. Medusa pop gaily away from their stay put family tree, join the sparkling plankton, ball for generation, and even have a baby jelly who can swim. But these babies, as though bored with the life of their wandering parents, return to shore. They settle down and start stay-at-home hydroid colonies like the original family homestead. Pagu found what he was after in the grotto of eating trees. He found not only a snail, one snail shell, but a whole treasure of shells. Since the anemone jungle slopped down to the grotto, shells dropped by anemones or brought by waves rolled into the cave. Here were snail shells of many kinds and sizes and all the snail shells were empty. Well, said old pal, so little old Pagu has hit the jackpot. Was it all a dream? Pagu didn't know where to start. He began trying on one shell after another in a frenzy of joy. But at last, old pal got an idea into Pagu. Look, boy, he cried, after all, you wear only one shell, so find that one. A fat little periwinkle shell fit Pagu. His small soft body curled into its curves as long as though made for this place. The door was too wide, but with both gloves he could close the opening fairly well. Pegu did not start running in wild loops as he had done with the first snail shell, the horn. With dignity he walked from the deep, hidden grotto of eating trees and sat on a stone. Here the little fish found him. Since bringing meat that time to... The landlady of Travelling Towers, the small-mouthed fellow, had used any crustacean 
at all to shred meat for him. He tied meat to shrimps and left those pale creatures to work on it. Shore crabs, swimmer crabs, and any crabs at all were very useful, just so long as they didn't catch and shred him along with the meat. Sometimes a huddle of shrimps didn't understand when he dashed back to claim his tiny morsels. Shrimps exploded in all directions, but they came back. The small fish kept everyone satisfied. Pegu was so startled when the small fellow switched, switched up to him that he crouched far back in his shell and put up both gloves. When he looked out, there lay a nice piece of steak and a job to do. He cut and shredded that scallop meat for all that he was worth. If a hermit crab can feel flattered, Pagu should have felt a warmish glow, even in cold ocean water. To be given a job like this to work on meat, that young Pagu now was large enough to be noticed. He wasn't sitting upstairs in old traveling towers watching the landlady below and hoping. Pagu himself was carving. Of course, he ate his share. He did so well that he sprayed meat particles all over the scenery. Tyndall currents caught them up and carried the news around the corners. Not only the small fish returned, but hungry shrimp, hungry worms, hungry hermits, hermits in all sizes. Pegu had rested from hermit fights of late and had almost forgotten the rude ways of his own tribe. Clutching as much steak as his claws could go, Pegu retreated. He scuttled toward his grotto of eating trees, his new periwinkle shell bumping along behind. All the game followed. They clawed and pulled at Pegu's tasty lunch. They knocked his little shell around, reached into his tight, too wide doorway, and pinched him with no mercy at all. He tried to block that doorway, but his gloves were much too small, and he had no more chances to taste the feast he had so carefully prepared. Pegu had learned something, and old instinct made it a fact by saying, yep, you may be a little bit larger after that last molting, but you're not yet large. It was only too true, and yet he could not hold his own against the big boys. And this doorway, why hadn't he chosen a better shell? That hole was much too wide. Oh well, when the rumpus was over, he would go back there and get another house with an opening he liked. He knew where he could get it. Pegu almost smiled.